And at the moment, guys, the score is 4-3 to three in the favor of my insanity. The first team to five wins in a best of nine, so this could be it. It's all on Little Bo to bring it back for his team, XMG, if they want to qualify for Season 3 of the Ace Routine Story Cup. But alternatively, my insanity, who's also looking to qualify, very close to clenching it together, we'll see if Joshi can close this out or not, spawning in the top right corner of the map in the Ace Routine Story Cup Season 3 qualifiers. It's the Red Terran player from my insanity, Jokshi. And the player in the upper left as the blue Protoss, it is Lilibo. So this was a very strange pick for me to see. We were talking a little bit before the game and the Ace Team Story Cup guys explain when you're on your last life as your team, you can bring back one player. If they've already played, if they've already lost, if they've already died, doesn't matter, you can bring back one player. Now, Little Bo was not the player I would have seen as the go-to. Honestly, I was expecting like Todd to come back, maybe even Zake. But Lilbo, the only reason I find it so astounding is because of all the games played today, and I, I don't want to, I try not to phrase this negatively, but realistically, he lost the worst to Jokshi, I feel. Now, granted, a lot of that was getting caught off guard, and maybe he said to his team, like, look, guys, put me back in, I can do this, I made one mistake and it won't happen again. Or alternatively, he may have just been studying Jokshi's play over the last couple matches, I don't know. But either way, he's here, and this is the last hope of XMG. I really hope he has something in mind. Uh, if he's just going to play like he did, but not make that one mistake, he's still... He's still so unlikely, honestly, that he won't be busted by Jachi. I just, like, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think Jachi is dominating in mid-game uh, TVP, and Todd was the one who showed the strongest reaction to that. I agree. That's why I was expecting Todd to come back specifically. But we'll see what ends up happening. Habitation Station does lead to a lot of very interesting gameplay. Not just because of the golds, but this does bring a lot of attention to the game. Although I don't think either player is going to comfortably take it. Because the thing is though, while Lobo didn't perform too well against Joshi, I've seen him play in the past. And he is a really talented player who can get really aggressive. But that being said, again, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Because he didn't get a good feel for him in the first part of this. and. Everything is on his shoulders. And the thing that's so, so frustrating about this is like when you're in the actual season of the Acer Team Story Cup, there's less pressure being on this ace match because if your team loses right now, you don't even get to play the season. But if you lose like the last game in one of the season games, you just lose some points. You'll be back for more next week type thing. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure to put on Lobo. Yeah, well, hopefully it's just not thinking about it, just kind of focusing on the game at hand, but one Reaper going to play with the Zealots. Emphasis on play, because the Stalker is going to come out and shut this down. Uh, kind of classic Jackson move, though, here, where he just tries to keep the SCV hidden towards the third, sometimes the fourth. He'll come back with the Reaper later, and if that gets shut down, he'll send the SCV right into the main. And that's kind of Jackson's strong point in this matchup. You know, we talk about the mid-game, but it's what allows him to get there. It's getting the right scouting information, not having to burn scans and... I love the way he does this with the SCV. No other Terran player does this as frequently or as diligently as he does. It's all about those minerals, man. Really important for that five, five per minute or whatever the, uh, the numbers are. <laughs> you know what's also interesting? Jachi actually walled off. This is, that... a, for some reason, a very popular map for Gateway in your natural. It's interesting it walls off too, because like, let's say it's a blink gauntlet, or not even a blink gauntlet, but let's just say it's like some sort of gateway all and it forces Joshi to lift out of his natural. It's going to be very easy for the Mothership Core to pick these off for free. Well, not Mothership Core, but the Stalkers with the Mothership Core vision. So you're right, it's a bit strange to see that, but we'll see if that ends up coming into effect or not. For now, Joshi does get a scout off on the natural. I don't believe Lilbo's even seen the Reaper, actually, so comfortably hiding for the time being. But he has Seriously? positioned a Zealot up here and a Stalker to, yeah, to try and intercept. Uh, definitely expecting at the very least. Again, not a very good Reaper map. Ooh, but he that's does, why it's so easy to shut it down. He does see everything, though. Including the second gateway. And that's going to uh, be key, too, because if you had the second gateway done, there's no way you had the money for the Robo, Nexus, as well as the Stargate. So through process of elimination, you actually can assume that there's not going to be a proxy Stargate anywhere on the map, or even one in the dead space that he didn't scout. Plus one weapons is going to be the research of choice for a little bow. So maybe going into blank Colossus. This, yeah, this when you see plus one weapons early, it's pretty much Colossus every single time because the plus one weapons don't really benefit Gateway in the same way it does the Robo Tech. Yeah, it's so weird because not only maybe like a month ago, I was like, all the Colossus are doing High Templar charge lot. <laughs> 
Well, that, I mean, it was really good. It still is really good. Ooh, nice observer snipe. Joshi is on the ball today with observer snipes. But uh, this push moving across the map is designed to go for that photon overcharge. It's going to try and force that. The Earth Three Stalkers here, granted, they can do a bit of damage, but realistically, with Stim, uh, if Joshi gets the overcharge, backs up, waits for Stim, and goes back again, Lobo currently doesn't really have enough to really contend with the army is the problem. It's a much harder map to do this push, you know. Any other map, they have, uh, you know, not a ramp, first of all, up into the natural, or a very, very wide ramp. You can actually poke up here and not be too afraid, but he's going to be very careful. Unfortunately, Little Bo didn't actually invest in any sentries, otherwise he could cut this army in half, and Jachi will go ahead and force that cannon in. I didn't actually realize that covered the whole ramp, too. That's actually pretty nasty. But I guess he's all gonna get a stock with this too, and this is looking dangerously similar to what happened to Lobo last time. The only difference is Josh didn't dive through the overcharge for the Mothership Core, but still loses some units early on. Still, I guess, like an even trade technically, if we want to phrase it like that. But the Fast Colossus, we finish up here shortly, and Josh really needs to see this. Would I like to identify it. The nice thing about Colossus tech is that there aren't. I mean, there's the all in that you get a lot of Colossus, but. Another observer down. Do observers even have cloak to this guy? Is Joshi wearing some sort of glasses that are like cell shaded in a certain way? The polarity of the screen reflects differently with observers. I mean, Yo. he's so good. There's one thing that I really like about watching pro players that I really think they're really smart about doing, but I never understood when people hype about seeing observers. I think they're the easiest thing in the world to see. Oh well, yeah, they're if you're looking for them, yes. But I mean, like if you're just kind of looking around the map, darting all over like 500 APM. You so. you know you like there's two spots they're always at, and then over your army. It's, it's just that's true. It's like Overlord predictions when you're trying to chase them down, really. But yeah, uh, this factory gonna get the scout that he needs for sure eventually. But the problem is, there's a lot of gateways on the way. That's a Ooh, our this is a, pylon. This is a very nice scout, actually. I was just talking about that. There's, I was gonna say like Colossus openings generally aren't very aggressive, but there is the all in with Colossus, uh, and this factory is definitely gonna scout how many gateways there are. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be an all in. Oh, he's uh, just stand off of it. No, it's for sure, but a drop of the main gonna draw this backwards. Some stalkers are gonna get taken down by Stim Marines. Oh, it's only up to five. I thought he was up to more. But uh yeah, blind stalkers or regular regular stalkers are actually just not very good unless they can actually get the meta back. Wow, these marines actually uh, chasing down that stalker gets another one. Can pick up out of this too, because the stalkers are now down. No anti-air really that readily available. It looks like he's just gonna fight with the marines instead. Uh, only two get up, but. This is, uh, again, Jachi getting a bit of a run by there. Doesn't kill too many probes. But. Is this the only game where Jachi has actually flown the factory? I don't recall seeing a floating I think so. factory. That is I, so odd. Uh, wow, the Colossus here's got almost no health, too, which is kind of sad. If Jachi had knocked that down, this would have been a huge advantage for him early on like this. But, you know, the advantage of the factory being like this, guys, it, it sounds silly, but Jachi's the type of guy to do it. Like, land and start building wood mines, land and start building Hellions or something, but... Uh, we'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Some Zal's gonna be cutting around here a little bit. Gotta focus the stock just so we can lift up with the medevac safely. This does exactly that. Oh, nope, forgot some units. <laughs> Comes back for it. Meanwhile, attacking the natural point while this is going on, too. Not a lot of stalkers, though, so the Colossus actually getting kind of down by these Vikings. Now turning around on this. The dime has been, or the coin's been flipped, and now, unfortunately, only three stalkers remain. The Colossus going down was kind of huge, and another drop went on the main. There's one Colossus up here, but it really doesn't have a lot of health. Just he shields. Just careful. Now he's, he's having a difficult time covering both areas, while meanwhile, Jachi, now that he knows how much pressure he's putting on, isn't afraid about it's, taking that gold. The Colossus are not going to be out in the middle of the map to uh, stop him from harvesting. It's truly surprising me how much Jachi's making this work. Because, guys, when you go for these fast Colossus, they're kind of meant to counter just these heavy bio openings. But Jachi on a gold, he's got he's been making a lot work so far. Unfortunately, his medevac count, or medevac count has kind of been dwindled, so to speak, and he's invested in a lot of Vikings, so I'm a little bit worried there, about future stims. Yeah, there is a very scary part right now where Little Bo is, is probably throwing his hands up a little bit and saying, okay, I'm just going to attack because I, I can't secure a third right now. Uh, and he does so have... Submits. He doesn't have a lot. He doesn't have enough. And Joshi scans to confirm this. Stalkers can be taken out of the retreat. So will the Mothership Corp. It's not careful. The Vikings have got to be so careful, though, because if they get too yeah. aggressive... Lobo does have Blink, and as you see, it's just one of the Vikings. Where are the medevacs? He has one medevac, he doesn't have the chance to heal. He does give up the gold, knowing that he can't contest that army. Not yet, anyways. I think a lot of this too was like, if he had medevacs, he would have stayed for that, but... As you said, like, these Marauders are all... Well, they're pretty much dead already, is the problem. I like that Lobo is attacking here. I really do like that he's being aggressive, as opposed yes. to what yes. we saw, you know, other times. Where they just kind of sit back and hope Jachi doesn't kill them. This is a very, uh, 
gold. This is a gold opportunity if you're able to do something. It's very Marauder heavy though, and there are still a lot of Vikings. I don't know if you can actually break it. Pun intended. Gold. Uh, yes, totally. <laughs> All right, well, actually, we still have a nice snipe of that Mothership Core. The Mothership Core actually starts losing its effectiveness the further you get into the game, but the option of a recall remains powerful throughout all of the game, whether it's early, late, or mid-game. The factory's still kind of chilling over here. I really wish you would land it and build a widow mine and just put in that natural mineral line. Who but did that? Did you? Was it a pro league game? Oh, it was Maru. He actually landed it on Frost, the natural, and built a widow mine that actually killed a bunch of probes. Yeah, that would be oh, really cool kid. to see right now. But man, what what I'm getting worried about again? Still producing a lot of Vikings, going very Viking heavy, and almost no medevacs involved with this army. The one medevac he has has almost no energy on it. Yeah, I would like more medevacs. I like that he has a lot of Vikings. Don't get me wrong, but more medevacs right now. Um, and Lobo is thinking about transitioning into Storm as well, getting that charge, oh, stopping the class production. Well, now it's going to be the return where Josh is going to be able to stop the mining on the gold. Lobo, I'm not sure if he originally planned to go for the gold, but there was a Widow Mine or something stopping the other third, so. Didn't want to pull back the observer. Just a Marine, never mind. <laughs> Stock is looking forward, gonna try and get on top of the Marauders. There's such a heavy Marauder force, even without Medivacs. There's still now some Medivacs, actually. Meets. Oh, but the Colossus are gonna get focused out so quickly. Yeah. Now the Vikings, they can land behind this. SCVs are pulled to soak some of these hits, and the Marauders, oh boy, the Marauders are gonna tear these Stalkers to shreds. There's nothing to keep them back. There's no Immortals, there's no Colossus, and this fight could be what qualifies my insanity. Good game is gonna be called. Ladies and gentlemen, Jokshi, as long alongside my insanity, will qualify through today for the Acer Team Story Cup Season 3. Three qualifiers. <sighs> Deep breaths. <laughs> Sorry, I was rooting for my insanity. If that wasn't a clear bias already, guys, but really stoked that our friends can make it through. Of course, XMG put on some really good games that we can't take away from that in the slightest. Todd played fantastically well against Jokshi, and honestly, that game was so back and forth. If that had gone slightly differently, Jokshi may have never even gotten to where he this point now, where he won five three at the end, but. Well, congratulations to my insanity on making out of Today Alive. Taking out uh, IVD Gaming as well as XMG. And uh, that's that's pretty much it for the Easter Team Strike Up cast, guys.